Hi everyone, thanks for, for tuning in. Um, I apologise, I haven't got my microphone or anything. I'm actually away at the moment. Um, so the sound quality is probably not going to be that great. Um, I wanted to do a video today. I've been spending a bit of time just browsing around YouTube and looking at all the different pastors and teachers out there and what they're preaching and teaching. Um, I've got to say, I'm, I'm pretty frustrated and annoyed. Um, most of you will know all of the mainstream preachers. Um, all garbage. Um, I'm probably not going to be overly nice in this video because I'm a little... I'm, I'm very annoyed, actually. I'm really annoyed. Um, I'm going to say it as it is. I'm calling it out. I'm, honestly, I'm sick of it. I'm sick to death of what I see out there. I'm talking about, you know, your mainstream preachers. I'm also talking about some smaller channels as well. Um, but we're talking about John MacArthur, Jimmy Swaggart, Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Mayer. You know, the list goes on with those wolves. There's, uh, there's millions of them. None of these people seem to be the ones preaching any part of the true gospel. None of them. Instead, what they do is they corrupt it. They either add to it, they take away from it, they dance all around it. Um, these guys are going to say anything but the pure truth. They will use their Bibles, though. Fantastic. Get the Bible out, you know. They even use the name of Jesus. They use the name of Jesus a lot. They look pious. They look good. Um, they look like they're telling the truth. And it will sound good. But it's lies. All lies. Now, before anyone tries to scream that I'm judging, um, well, yeah, I am. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm judging. Now, I'm not judging here non-believers. I'm not judging people who have nothing to do with Christ. I'm not, not doing that at all. I would never do that. I would never even dare to think that. What I'm doing is I'm examining the wolves who come in in sheep's clothing to deceive innocent people, and I'm condemning them. I'm judging the hell out of those people. And I believe that we're called to do this as ambassadors for Christ because these wolves, these men and women that are all over YouTube are taking people to hell and stop stopping people from finding the truth of Christ to give you an example, John MacArthur he's the kind of preacher that's going to sit there and say that God's purpose of salvation was to make us better people or somehow to make us less sinful people, right? All of his sermons say the same thing. Everything that I've ever watched, they all say the same thing, but he just puts a slightly different spin on it. But ultimately, it's the same message, and the gospel is lacking in every single one of them. And the poor people who seek the truth, who genuinely seek the truth and want to be saved and want to find God, what happens to them when they listen to his sermons? They're going to look honestly at themselves, and they're going to see the certain sins in their lives are still there and they're not being taken away, right? Because it doesn't work that way, okay? And they're gonna be discouraged. They're gonna be let down. They're gonna be upset. They're gonna be like, well, why, why have I still got this? Why am I still struggling with this? And it, it stops people from finding the truth of Christ. And when you stop people from finding the truth of Christ, it's disgusting. It might look good on the surface. It might look like they're just good guys, you know? But they're devilish. Now, as for Christians out there who think that these kind of preachers are speaking truth, well, you're blinded yourself to your own unrighteousness and you don't really see the need for a saviour. Um, you can't watch these kinds of people unless you believe that you're righteous yourself. It's just not possible. You don't need Christ, really. Um, you'd just be one of those great Christians who's just 
doing no wrong and everything's all perfect in your life. Well, happy days for you. Um, and as a result of being that way, well, you're going to judge everyone else around you just the same way that the Pharisees did. You probably won't be as direct as the Pharisees were in the scripture. You'll probably be more indirect, but same attitude. Let's have a look at Romans 2.21. You therefore, which teaches another, teach you not yourself. You that preaches a man should not steal, do you steal? You that says a man should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you commit sacrilege? You that make thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonours you God? Right? Yeah, that's exactly right. This is exactly what those preachers do. They sit there and they pick out stones or rocks or sins that they see as being bad and they'll pick on it and act like they don't do it when in fact they very well do. Because we all do. Now any preacher who speaks anything other than the truth of the gospel in their message, the gospel of our salvation, which by the way, the gospel of our salvation is so simple that even a four-year-old can understand it. Right? If, if they're not preaching that, turn them off, unsubscribe, get rid of them. Don't have them in your life, there's no need. What's the gospel? It's so hard, it's so difficult. Christ's death, burial and resurrection as payment for our sin, his shed blood, his finished work, his finished work, his faith, not our faith, not our works, his, he's done it for us. That's the gospel, okay? Put your trust in Christ and you are saved. That's the gospel. Now, Jimmy Swaggart, if we pull him out for a minute, he'll have you believe that you're going to buy his Bible for 150 US dollars, uh, which has got his notes all over it, or you've got to go to his seminary in order to understand what he calls the message of the cross. So only Jimmy Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart's the only person, the only Christian that preaches the message of the cross, but he actually doesn't. He actually doesn't. It's rubbish. That is the message of the cross, what I just gave you. Christ's death, burial and resurrection is payment for your sin. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Salvation is by grace through faith, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. That is it, right? It is a free gift, Ephesians 2, 8. You don't need a degree, right? It's very simple. Have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Paul again speaking here. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity. Right? The simplicity of Christ. Very, very simple. Stay away from anyone else that tries to complicate it or overthink it. Now, if we get out of the mainstream, right, um, there is a few interesting characters out there on YouTube at the moment. Um, this Generation 2434. Uh, he seems to be quite popular. Lovely guy. Um, Dr. Barry Orr. Funny bloke. Um, nothing against them personally, but uh, I'm going to be talking about what they're preaching. Uh, there's Watchman River. Um, and there's Cool Cat 7729. Watchman River's a lovely bloke, but he wakes up every day wondering, come on, I just want to get raptured, I want to get raptured, I want to get raptured. Come on, mate. Look, yes, we all want to get raptured, but we've got to live our life. We can't wake up every single day and just focus our entire message around the rapture. You know, it's about some people. This is the fullness of the Gentiles is not in yet. People need to hear the gospel. God is still offering salvation out there for free. Like, the rapture will happen when, when God is ready for that to happen. Right, keep an eye out and all that sort of stuff. But oh, it's quite frustrating actually because this is all I'm seeing. If you're just sitting around and wanting to listen to some, some truth, right? Just while you're relaxing, um, it is predominantly rapture, 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 rapture at the moment. It's a flavour of the month. People trying to work out a date. Um, and look, like I said, there is nothing wrong with keeping eyes open. 
um, keeping an eye on events. But I heard one of these guys, I think it was Cool Cap 7729, he's so convinced that the rapture was going to happen on September 17th, he actually said that if it didn't, he wouldn't know what he was going to do with himself. That's terrible. It shouldn't be that way. And then I saw he posted an update up yesterday because September 17th had passed and uh, he's now said that God's told him that it's been pushed down another 10 days. Um, look, happy days, right? He's moved it out to September 27th. Um, I just want to ask the question, really? I mean, is this, is this glorifying God or is this making people look like absolute idiots in the Christian world? If non-believers that don't know anything about God see this kind of thing, what do you expect that them, what do you expect them to think? They're going to think it's a joke, right? I'm not being a scoffer here. You know, I do believe in the rapture. I know that that's going to happen. It's truth. It's a biblical truth. But to know exactly what day by looking at you know Leviticus and Psalms and that and the Jubilees and all this kind of stuff, it's 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 impossible to work it out that way, right? You're not going to know the exact day, but it is very close. There's no doubt about that. Um, another pastor I've seen, I've only just found him. His name's Dr. Gene Kim. But from what I can see, he seems to be quite good. But again, it seems to me that very, very few preachers appear to centre their messages entirely on the gospel of our salvation. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection is payment for our sin. He's shed blood. We need to hear this. Everyone needs to hear this in every message. I just don't understand why. There's no point being a Christian preacher or a Christian teacher unless the message is centered around Christ's finished work on the cross. His shed blood as payment for our sin. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, Ephesians 2, 8. By grace you are saved through faith. Yeah? This is the gospel. You want to be saved? Do you want to be raptured? Fine. Well, then trust in Christ's finished work. You're not going to get raptured if you don't trust in Christ's finished work. It's as simple as that. Build your teaching around that. Correct error. Let's get souls saved. Let's get souls saved. And lead people to salvation by the truth of the gospel. Now, I want to talk about Generation 2434, YouTuber. He's done some interesting videos, some good information. And I'm not trying to, you know, be hateful to the guy or anything like that. I mean, he seems like a nice bloke and all that sort of stuff. That's good. I think some things particularly need to be really pointed out here. Firstly, the channel's called Generation 2434, which comes from... The scripture verse Matthew 24 34 where Jesus says this generation shall not pass away until all things be fulfilled all right that's the verse all right so all of what things let's if we if we read the preceding verses in Matthew chapter 24 it talks about false prophets wars iniquities earthquakes the abomination of desolation the Antichrist great tribulation all must happen before that generation that Jesus refers to in Matthew 24 34 passes away right scripture says this generation shall not pass away until all of these things iniquities wars abominations tribulations antichrists great tribulation as well right um, and then at the end of that, Christ returns in all power and great glory, which will be a massive, huge event. Everything in Matthew 24 is referencing that seven years of tribulation. It's going to be a diabolical time of disaster and trouble. Um, that's what Matthew 24 is talking about. Now. The problem that I have here is that Generation 2434 teaches that, or he believes, that we Christians today are that final generation that Jesus is referring to in verse 34. But then he also teaches that the rapture is imminent 
and he believes that the rapture is pre-tribulational. Now, how does that make sense? This is a huge problem. We cannot be raptured prior to the tribulation and also be the generation that will not pass away until after the tribulation. Right? It, you can't be both. It's one or the other. I mean, it, it just can't be both. But it's not physically possible and it's confusion. I also heard him say in his most recent video, which would have been put out a day or two ago, that he believes 2 Thessalonians 2 says that the church is raptured before the Antichrist is revealed. But if you actually open up 2 Thessalonians 2 and read it, it says, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, right? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Right? Read it again. That day shall not come until when? Until the falling away happens. Well, <laughs> you can tick that box. The falling away is here. That's done. But the man of sin must be revealed first. Okay? That's what it says. It's not me saying it. That's what the scripture says. Just do it for what the scripture says. I don't know why they change it. So why is he saying that the rapture happens before the Antichrist is revealed? It's bizarre, but it's wrong. Now, in this verse in 2 Thessalonians, what day is Paul referring to here? Is it Christ coming in the clouds in all power and great glory for the whole world to see? It's going to be the massive spectacle. Is it the same day that is being referred to in Matthew 24 at the end of the tribulation? No, it's not the same day, right? It's very different. The event in Matthew 24 is going to be so obvious, it's not even funny, right? No one's going to miss that. It's not like you're going to be sitting there going, oh, hang on, did I miss Jesus coming in the clouds? Did, did I miss that seven years of massive destruction with the whole world and skies falling in, stars falling from the sky, waters turning to blood and, and God coming and standing on the earth? shaking the whole place, the foundations of the earth. Can you miss that? I, 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 you can't miss that, right? The event that Paul is referring to <laughs> uh, is the rapture of the church, right? Now, for all you people that don't believe in this rapture of the church, get out of my comments and get off my channel. Go somewhere else and talk to someone else. I'm not interested in hearing your comments, right? This is about what the scripture says. This is about what the scripture teaches. I'm not interested in anything else. You're just troublemakers and you want to fight. But then ultimately when it comes down to actually sitting down and having a conversation, you won't do it. You just want to argue. The believers here he was talking to were worried that they'd missed the resurrection of the body. Right? Missed the harpazo. Missed the rapture. They weren't worried, oh, what have we missed the, the big day? I mean, you, you can't miss that big day. So Paul settles them down. That's what Paul's doing in Second Thessalonians. No one's going to miss Christ's second coming, that's for sure. But most people are going to miss the rapture. Like 99% of the population of the world are going to miss that. And again, I'm sorry for you people out there that don't want to believe in the rapture. That's your choice. If you don't want to believe it, just go somewhere else. Go and listen to John Piper and, you know, go and listen to things that make your ears tickle and ring and whatever makes you feel good, do that. But for those of you who have ears and soft hearts and you want to know the truth, you want to learn from the scripture what Jesus actually te says it teaches, stay on and I love to have you here. So Matthew 24 has nothing to do with the rapture of the church, which is Christ's body, all right? Matthew 24 is Jesus talking to who? He's talking to the nation of Israel. The nation Israel. Now, he's not talking to the Israel that you see on earth today. That's not who he's talking to. It's got nothing to do. This here, the Israel that we see today is at least for now, 
a creation of man, right? The nation itself was established in 1948 by the Rothschild family, which is a Jewish banking family. It is not, that is not the fulfillment of prophecy in any way, shape or form. All it is is deception to lead you up the garden path. But hear this, Jesus said, that generation of Israel shall not pass away until all those things be fulfilled. Oh, hang on, how does that work? Now, this is probably going to be difficult to understand with the human mind, but that generation that Jesus refers to 2,000 years ago has not yet passed away. How do I know that? One, because Jesus said that they will not pass away until all of those things are fulfilled, which have not yet been fulfilled. So therefore, they have not passed away. If you want to argue that, well, then go and argue it with Jesus because he's the one that said it. But now I can explain how they have not passed away. First of all, they haven't passed away, but it's not us. It's not us. It's not the believers today. It's not the church, the body of Christ. We are not that generation that Jesus is referring to. We are not generation 2434. See, in Acts 28, God said that's enough for Israel. He's finished. He, he, he counted Israel in unbelief. They were set aside and salvation was given to the Gentiles for free, as a free gift, right? Because of Israel's rejection of their Messiah, right? So everything prior to Acts 28 is God dealing with Israel, primarily Israel. Why is that so hard for people to see? The real Israel are going through a process right now while God deals with the Gentiles. He offers salvation to the Gentiles now. So where are where are Israel then if they haven't passed away? Where is Israel now if it's not the nation that we see on the map that John Hagee loves? Oh, John Hagee, uh, he, he, Zionism. This has got nothing to do with Israel. I'll tell you where they are. They're in the graves. Okay, just because they're in their graves doesn't mean that they're actually dead or passed away. It's the same when a Christian dies. When a Christian dies, the body dies. They go to the grave, but they're not dead. Okay? Israel are in the graves. They've been set aside for the moment. And Ezekiel 37 explains how God will raise them from the graves and they will be born again. Right at the beginning of the tribulation period. Right? so that they can then see the kingdom of God which was promised to them and what did Jesus say? You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. All right? That's why the kingdom of God is not here on earth right now because you can't see it because nobody is born again including Christians and I know every Christian is going to jump on here and go hey I'm not born again. I'm born. No you're not. You're not born again. You're still living. You have a, a spirit. You're born of the spirit. Right? You have a new spirit when you believe the gospel, but you are not born of, again of the flesh. No way. You're still living in a fleshly body, okay? You're still living in a fleshly body at the, at the moment of the rapture. Whether you're dead or whether you're standing here on earth at the moment, you're gonna be snapped up, changed, new body, all right? And then you'll be able to see anything. You'll be able to see the kingdom as well. We aren't promised the kingdom. We're, not, we're in heavenly places, all right? But, um, the kingdom is a promise that God made to Israel, an everlasting promise. Now, all of these pastors and teachers are always saying, you ask them, oh, how can I be saved? They say, oh, read John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever should believe in him will have eternal everlasting life. I'm sorry, that's not the gospel and that's not going to save you, okay? Believing in Jesus, I've said this before, believing in Jesus is not going to save you. Asking him into your heart is not going to save you. Saying the sinner's prayer is not going to save you. Water baptism is not going to save you. All of this is nonsense. The only thing that's going to save you is putting your trust in Christ's finished work, okay? In his death, burial and resurrection, his shed blood, his payment for your sin. He died on the cross, that's it. That's all you need to believe 
Okay? Just believing in Jesus. Oh, I believe in Jesus. That's not saving anyone. The devil believes in Jesus. Right? Anything else is a lie. Now, is John 3.16 a lie? No, it's not a lie. It's not an error. It's just not written to us. Is Matthew 24 written to us? No. When Jesus said, you must be born again to Nicodemus, who was he speaking to? Us? Or was he speaking to Nicodemus? Nicodemus is a Pharisee, a Pharisee, a Jew. Okay? Why do we have to mix it all up? There's no need to mix it up. Rightly divide. Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.15, be a workman rightly dividing the word of truth. Just recognize what's written to you and recognize what's not. It's really not hard. So are we generation 2434? Four, four? No, we're not. Dr. Barry Orr and Generation 2434 sat down together and did a big video on what they described as the errors of hyper-dispensationalism. Well, there's the problem, okay? They're not reading the word rightly divided, they're ignoring the clear dispensations in the word and they're applying everything in the Bible to themselves, which is destructive, erroneous, and not going to help anybody. They're leading people astray, innocent people astray, which is why YouTube is happy for their channels to reach tens of thousands of people. Because who controls the airwaves? God? No, the devil controls the airwaves. He's going to do everything in his power to stop people from getting any kind of truth out. That's for sure. Hear the truth. Believe the gospel. Stop listening to these fools and read the book of Romans through to Philemon thoroughly before you even begin to try and understand what Jesus was talking about during his earthly ministry, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, Ephesians 2, 8, right? Start there, read Romans through to Philemon, okay? And trust Christ. He has done it for us. That's it. Okay? Stop trying to perfect the body. There's a saying, you can't polish a turd. Well, you can't, all right? I'm sorry to finish it that way, but you cannot. Your flesh is sinful. If you read Romans through to Philemon, Paul will explain all of this to you very clearly. Okay? And you'll be set free and at peace. And you're not going to be so worried about, oh my God, when's the rapture going to happen and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, great. Look forward to the rapture. It's going to happen. It's. It, I'm looking forward to it myself. But you don't centre your entire teachings and, and, and preachings around one simple sort of side doctrine we need to preach the gospel of our salvation and everybody needs to hear it love you guys if you've made it this far thanks so much for watching